All right, we have another rain event occurred in the last 20, uh, last 12, 16 hours. And we're coming close up to probably 200 mil in 12 hours. I thought we'd come out uh, not long after a, a downpour and just have a look at some of the details that uh, really show up when these uh, systems are working at their uh, full potential that they're designed to do. So a few weeks ago I made a film on how I wanted to um, use this edge here to hold back water. Now at the same time when I put that edge in, uh, you, whenever you want to hold back water, you also got to then take into account how you're going to discharge it when you've got too much. So I've, I've left this end open here and I've used this irrigation post which will have a uh, irrigation tap on it eventually. I've used this to set a height here. So now that this we're fully saturated and this garden is filling up with water, this is basically a, a, a miniature spillway here which controls the level. As this garden is on contour and when you get the rain you really see how your contours uh, shape up and you can see there's a good even amount of water here where we emitted that edge because we we want the water as I explained last time to come down here which it's doing and I'll get, give you a close up of that soon and you can see here it's filling up but it's filling up pretty level um, and then it's we're controlling the level so that it doesn't overfill with the discharge there so it's spilling out there um, so it's flooding all the way through the mulch and into the soil and then that level shouldn't change much there because we've set that level here so we'll keep this here permanently as a good level discharge so that we don't end up filling up here uh, after we cap those those bricks off um, so we'll go along and you'll see there's probably still some water uh, you can't see it, but there was water passing through the grass a short here. Here you can see it here. So there's water passing down from that swale there, and it's passing down, and it's filling up that uh, edge there, and irrigating, passively irrigating that, that garden. This will be filled with gravel to the brim, so it won't hold water once it's finished. Um, but let's go here. You can see that water there. Now that is discharging out that exit over there near that post. And then it's also discharging around here. So even in heavier flows, that'll be the, the direction of, of that water there. But when we have a look up here, so this is the, the main spillway. Now it hasn't gone over there yet. There's no evidence and there's no patterns showing that, that we've had this spill yet, which is good. The reason I say it's good is because the ponds are not full yet. So if this was discharging and the ponds weren't full, uh, then we can we can safely say that our spillway is set too low. Um, my suspicion is that it still may be a fraction low because we've got about can't see real well in the, on the camera there, but we've got about 10 or 15 mil there before it starts to spill here. Now I have checked uh, this spillway up here and although it doesn't look like it's spilling that swale is actually spilling into 
that that swale there hasn't uh, discharged the main spillway and these smaller spillways to the dams one here uh, one up at up at that end and then another one over here now this one it doesn't look like it but there there is water down here now even though it looks like that this spillway may be a little a little low compared to this one this one and this one you also got to take into account peak flow and when you're absolutely full and you've got to take into account that you're going to get a balloon a ballooning effect in discharge when you get really peak flow so that just means that it's basically like when you start spilling over a spillway you might start out getting 10 mil of water going over your spillway so this one in peak flow might have 10 mil running over it well when you get even heavier flows then you go from 10 mil you might double it or triple it or quadruple it or, or more and you might have from 10 mil you might have a hundred mil going over that spillway so that's a balloon effect so even though you've set the spillway at this height in peak flow you need to allow for that ballooning of that volume of water and this will be the case when you set your um, your buffer on your on your on your wall even though the spillway height is here and uh, by all all purposes the water level is up here in peak flow and you're getting your this balloon effect happening you're up even a little bit higher so I would not be lowering this based on this information that I'm getting here because I've got 10 mil before I discharge there and I'm really a little bit high over there on that spillway but that really needs to come down or we could do a bit more maintenance on it get the grass down and just it may even just need a little bit of compaction um, and a little a little bit of just the vegetation removed it's probably all it needs um, because they're all these spillways were set with a with a laser level uh, when they were put in and this spillway was set this one here was set 50 mil higher than these these two here but since then I've um, used a hard surface to to dial that spillway in I didn't change the height but that hard surface is, is, is extremely accurate whereas these uh, are a biological vegetated um, spillway and there's more variable variables even though they were originally set the clay in them was originally set uh, at the right level you've got this kind of variability in the vegetation and the build-up of detritus under it and whatever so you can you can get this case where you get your levels start changing a little bit even after you've dialed them in the only way and this could be something to consider to dial them in to the accuracy of this one would be to set them with a hard surface and then then you're talking you know really dialed in inaccuracy and then you could you could literally fill these with a 10 mil discrepancy before you even discharge which is probably what's going to happen anyway because it's it looks like it's still passing through here anyway um, but look it sounds finicky and it sounds like it's 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 a little bit overkill but you've got to you got to take this stuff pretty seriously uh, because 
uh, when, when you start dealing with, with heavy flows and uncontrollable flows where it's just been raining and you've got mass, everything is full and, and you're, you're just praying that the rain will stop to save your infrastructure, it's just not a, a, a position you want to be in because it, it may not stop. So you've got to, you have to consider these minor details if you want the systems to work. If we were just going for just, you know, uh, easy discharge just to get rid of stuff, then it's it's a little bit less, you, you can be a little bit fussy. I mean, you still have to consider volumes, peak volumes, and, and, and dis, you know, in comparison to discharge and make sure you've got the discharge to take the volume. Um, but it's, but it's not, there's, there's a lot less dialing in because we're passively trying to fill one reservoir or two reservoirs before we discharge the, the whole system. So you, you you're dialing us in a, in a sequence of, a, of events through passive design that takes some thought and it takes some some detailed considerations uh, to be put in place for those passive systems to work they're not just going to happen on their own um, that's that's the difference and that's why uh, observation is the key and observation in in peak flows uh, it, it is going to reveal a lot